What's up, everyone? Welcome to On Deck 3. We got a freaking awesome show. I got Coleman Scott, I got Pat Papalizio, and I got Zahid Valenti on today. I think we're going to highlight the, the, the toughness of the ACC. I mean, they're going to be a really good conference. We had a whole bunch of stuff going on last weekend. I'm going to ask Zahid about the Mateo Pelo Cohen. Um, UNC had a big win over Virginia Tech. NC State beat Virginia. Um, and those two actually got a showdown, which I, I, I may ask both of them about. Um, so we'll have a fun time today. Uh, the first guest that we are going to talk to is none other than Mr. Uh, Pat Papalizio. So I'm going to give him a call right now. All right, guys, we're here with none other than Pat Papalizio. Pat, I was just down in Raleigh. I know, uh, just pay for a quick minute. <laughs> just a tiny minute. Yeah. Um, what's going on with your Monday? Monday, uh, back in the room. We got it. It was obviously a busy weekend with everybody in town. Uh, good fan base with some of the MMA guys were here with the UFC fights in Raleigh. So yeah, like I said, uh, sorry I got the, we didn't get to it's, hang it's, out at all. It's all good. You had you actually had a huge crowd there on Friday night. Yeah, and- Chase. Yeah. I can't believe how nice Reynolds Coliseum looks. That place is it's fantastic, huh? It's, it's an awesome wrestling venue. I mean, the way that they renovated that, and you got the metal ceiling, so it sounds pretty loud in there when when you got a good crowd. And for uh, an ACC duel kicking off uh, a Friday night, I thought we had a really good turnout. And you know, it helped having you guys in, in the crowd. I think it brought some good energy. Yeah. Well, you know what? I actually, I, I guess I was going to kind of bring that up to you is. How good the ACC is now? I mean, obviously you had UNC over Virginia Tech. I, yeah. I see you guys got Pittsburgh coming up this week. Um, I mean, you guys are, what, you guys are 11-0 now this season? Yeah, right now we are, yeah. The, so, I mean, ca- kind of a whole bunch of good teams in the ACC. Um, and that, that's probably, you, you probably love that, right? I think it's great for wrestling. You know, you, you look at the sport and seeing how it's evolving and teams competing with everyone right now. And for us, you know, our conference – it's getting ultra competitive, which I think is good. And I think that's what's mm-hmm. growing our fan base and people following the ACC. And it's going to make us all better come NCAAs. You know, that, that healthy competition, I think, is good to get everybody ready. And if you're having an off weekend, there's a chance you can get upset, whether it's an individual or, or a dual me team. And I think that's great for the conference. Where there's not a team that's just so superior and they're running away with the title every year. Yeah, this is just going to be make make all the coaches better and all the athletes better. Yeah, but yeah, you still want to win everything though. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. So give give us a little preview. Keith uh, Keith Gavin's done made some headway at Pittsburgh. Oh. He's been there three years. Uh, that's who you guys have Friday. You know yes. what? When I think about the duel, it feels like a toss-up to me. But I haven't broken every, every matchup. Um, give me kind of how you're looking at it. Yeah, they. I mean, they came in to Raleigh last year and they they beat us. You know, on paper, you could say we were favored a year ago, and they came in here and got got the W. So that's one of those matches. I know our guys are going to be excited to go into their place and compete at a high level. And yeah, I, you can go on paper and probably is it's a toss-up duel, and we got to win those clay. Uh, those tight close matches and uh, yeah. there's going to be a ton of them and they do they got some guys you know I think uh, on the rankings are probably head and shoulders above some of our guys and we got that as well so it's going to make one of those duels if you can get one of those big upsets it'll change the whole outcome of a duel and that's what makes duels exciting yeah, yeah. One, one big upset you know or maybe one of your your go-to guys is out that changes the whole game Okay, well, hey, let me. Uh, I'm gonna take you off topic. So I get HD. I can't help it. Uh, yeah. I, you know, I just joined FRL also, and we had the big debates. I, I love duels. I think if I got, if I was the guy running the show, I would have a dual national championship and a team national championship. Both. That's you, right. Yeah. You, right. You think that's probably best scenario. Um, okay. So my here's my take that I say to CP, and hey, you want to say no comment, you can say no comment. I say uh, NCAA championships, you can win with four guys. If they all score 25 points, realistically, you could win. A 40% of the team competing at an event and winning is not a good indicator of the team's success. How, how do you feel about that? 100%. I think if you want to see college wrestling grow, you change it to dual meets, and people are going to get behind a team. And they'll still come because it's great competition. But mm-hmm. Why can't we have national champs for individuals and take away the team score? And let's mm-hmm. guys are still going to show up. It's great wrestling, but when we have these dual meets every week, 
it changes the game. People will like a storyline when a big team gets upset. It changes the whole outcome of the season for yeah. week to week, and people will follow it. They they want as soon as the team's out of the playoffs in any sport, people stop following the team. Absolutely, so I think that's going to make college wrestling. I mean, look at the fan base here right now for us. You know. People really don't get too caught up in the individual rankings that much. They care about their team and NC State wrestling, and it's mm-hmm. starting to grow. And they, they love coming to Boomings. It's a two-hour event. People can tailgate before because it's good weather here. <laughs> it, was, it was beautiful yeah. weather there. It yes. was. So, you know, people can tailgate before, come watch some healthy competition, and go on with their day. As a tournament, we're sitting in a gym for 12 hours, and it's like, how do you get people there for 12 hours and want to come and watch? You're not going to be able yeah. to Yeah, no, absolutely. You know? I mean, I think, uh, listen, obviously, I, I'm, I'm in favor of both. I think if you, uh, but if you did take the team component away from the NCAA championships, which I'm not in favor of, I'm just saying if it, did, if it were to happen, I think you'd still sell out. I mean, the NCAA I, wrestling yeah. championships is the greatest. I mean, we're in a situation this year where there, there's a potential to not, for it not to be competitive where it could be over in the second session. People are just, they're still going to show up for sessions three, four, five, and six. Yeah, they want to see the best matches, good yeah. individual matches. I mean, diehard fans are going to know what good matches are coming up, regardless if it's a team score or not. But in dual meets, you're going to get, you're just you're going to attract new people that's healthy for the sport. We're going to get on TV. It's going to be bigger. There's going to be money money coming in, generating resources for different teams, and it's going to sell out stadiums if we can ever do it. Yeah, We need smart people behind it. <laughs> people, so. Of course. Okay, so... Um, Let's talk about the Hidley brothers a little bit. Obviously, they're both you know huge components of your team. Uh, Hayden's been what a second and third place, I believe. I'm not messing that up, am I? Second and fourth. Second and fourth. Okay. Trent's came in here and just had um, outstanding you know first part of the season. And so I heard. Listen, I heard that these guys are as clean cut as it gets and as hardworking as it gets. True, true or false? One hundred percent. And they both carry a four zero GPA. So really, they are. 100 the complete package of what you want as a student athlete when it comes to lifestyle wow. attitude just leadership they're they're the role model to a t they're they're light years ahead of their maturity right now they're great leaders for us and that's really helped put our program where it's at you know there's been people before them to get them get us to this level but these guys have come in yeah and elevated just the mentality of what you want to win a national title I yeah mean, it's it's contagious, and they don't let guys get away with anything that's a negative mindset. Everything's yeah. positive, and they're, you know, a, a great example is this. Last year, we did lose the pit duel. Hayden wrote a letter to the team, and it was like a 40-year-old guy wrote this letter. <laughs> I swear, I was like, this is something a 40-year-old guy would write. And Are you 40 yet? Yeah, we, you know that. We're, I'm a couple years ahead of you. Well, I, I'm 35. I knew we were like four or five years apart. I yeah. wasn't – okay. All right. I, I was at Oklahoma State. We get we got a sixth year there, so yeah. I got my doctorate at Oklahoma State. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, they're very mature. So he wrote this letter to the team, and it was like it was a great example of leadership beyond your years because it wasn't just aggressive. Hey, we got to do it. There was a reason behind it. There was a theme, and it was uh, there was a plan in place as, as someone yeah. that was on the team how we're going to all help and come together and have a great ending. And we did. You know we. We kind of all responded from that. These guys have just been great assets to our program. Man, yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome having those guys on the team. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the guys who came form because I got to see them last weekend. And, you know, you guys are kind of starting to form a really nice RTC. Obviously, you got Nick, who's made the team the last couple of years. Yeah. Um, now you got Mike Mock, who's you know who's getting really competitive. Uh, right. You got Tommy Gann, who's getting really competitive. Um, who, who am, I, am I forgetting? Somebody? Timmy McCall's been been yeah, here yep. with us. Um, Casper has been over coming in every day working with Nick. Uh, Lee Davis, Quentin Godley, um, I believe that's yeah. pretty much everybody we got in there. It's a good group. Yeah, so you, got, you guys are building a really competitive RTC. I mean, is that something that you see as uh, has to happen, or is that just, you know, the pieces are starting to fall into place? You've got a bunch of good kids who want to train. A little bit of everything. Um, I do believe it has a major impact on our, our guys that are here and in return, our guys here training and our coaching staff and our alumni backing it are uh, helping these these athletes to accomplish their goals uh, post-college. But it's been a perfect storm. I think it's because guys have come here, they've wrestled, they're comfortable with our program, then they graduate and they want to stay here in Raleigh. And then that old saying, iron sharpens iron, these guys yeah. are all here working with each other they're you know we're, we're lucky they're close to the same weight um and they can 
mix and match with partners. But it's been fun to watch these guys. I mean, there's days, Fridays is my favorite day if we're in town because it's match day. And I swear I come in here some days and it's just like the, the hair on the back of my neck stands up because of the intensity and just the high-level wrestling that you see. Yeah. And also, they're just they're good people to be around. You know, they're yeah. people that think outside the box and give you some good outlook on, on college wrestling or they'll keep me honest and be like, hey, you ever think about this? This is some things I see happening within your program. You know, Nick's really good and outspoken in that yeah. way, in a positive way. Like, hey, I see this happening in your program right now. Have you ever thought about these kind of things that could help these athletes? And, you know, I'll brainstorm with them and we'll come up with some good ideas. And if they ever need advice, you know, we're here to help them. So it's a, it's a good working relationship, really healthy with the coaching staff and the guys on the team. Yeah, I know, I know Mike Mock's a pretty deep thinker also. He's always yeah. got some really good questions and wants, wants to go deep right away. Questions sometimes. <laughs> too many, you said? Yeah, too many. <laughs> no, he's good. He's, he's awesome. These uh, guys think. I mean, that's the thing. Is here, as you know, I think you're one of those people, too, that's always thinking and trying to evolve and get yeah. better at things. And these guys make you – they keep you honest. You know, they're, they'll never let you just be stale and just go through the motions. And I think that's what makes good programs. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, let me ask you about one more dual meet, and then I'll see if you get any closing statements. Uh, yeah. UNC coming up. They just got the big win um, over Vatek. Uh, I mean, it's got they're right, they're right down the road. It's got to be a, a you know huge rivalry for you. Um, how are you guys feeling about that duel? It's, uh, it's two weeks at your place, correct? Yeah, uh, I think it's great. I think them coming along, Coleman's been doing a phenomenal job. His guys are obviously competing at a high level. We needed this. You know, this has been a long time coming where there's some really good programs right down the road from each other. This is how we can fill up uh, an arena and a stadium when you got, you know, two top 10 teams going at it and the dual meet people. They care about winning here when it comes to, you know, in state. So that's going to be a, a heated rivalry. And I think it's going to be great for college wrestling. And there's going to be some really good matches along the way. So, again, we obviously want to win every dual meet we're in, but ultimately I want our guys to continue to get better in high-pressured situations, and this is this is going to be one of those dual meets. I think from here on out, uh, the next three weeks are going to be like that. They're going to be high-pressured, similar to what you see sometimes in other conferences in the Big Ten and Big 12. That's something we haven't had lately in the ACC, and now we have it, and I think that's going to make us ready come NCAs. Yeah, um, yeah, I agree totally. So, cause, so just to – Phil, on what you said, you guys have Pittsburgh this week, North Carolina, and then the week after that, you have Virginia Tech. Yeah. Um, just so pe- people know what you're talking about. Yeah, not not a not an easy schedule there, so it's going to be good. It's going to be something that we've been kind of working up towards, and hopefully hit that high stride and peaking at the right time to hit those teams. Yeah. Okay. Well, that, that was fun. You got any last words for us? Obviously, uh, you'll be NCAA cha- ACC championship after that. You'll be at N- uh, NCAs. Minneapolis. Yep. I'm looking forward to the first one in the football stadium. Um, yeah. There. All right. See, you'll finally catch up there. I promise this time. <laughs> All right. You're going to be so busy, you won't be able to know which way is which. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's always the craziest week of the year. Okay, Pat, I appreciate you guys chatting with us, and uh, we'll catch you later. All right. Thanks, Pat. Peace. All right, guys. That was none other than Pat Papalizio. So I didn't bring it up to him, but (laughs) in all honesty, Pat pinned me in the 2003 World Team Trials. That was embarrassing. It was probably the last time I've been pinned in my whole life. Um, And then I got to know him and his brother in Frank, runs a lot of tournaments in New York at the Journeyman Wrestling Club. So I got to know them. Um, I've spent some time going down to North Carolina State. Always really enjoy my time there. And it's been fun, fun watching him grow as a coach in North Carolina State, grow the program. Because obviously, when he, you guys, a lot of people don't remember this, but when he went down there uh, a couple of years back, um, you know, he kind of cleaned house. He uh, has some really strict ways that he likes to run his program. And, you, you know, a lot of guys didn't want to uh, abide by that, and they, and they left the team. And so it's been fun watching him build back up. Obviously, they're 11 0 this year. They're having a really good year. Um, that's a really tough, obviously, talk to the Hidley brothers. Um, but they got the Bullard brothers too. They got Nick Green in. They just have a kind of a really tough lineup up and down. Um, and the ACC is, is getting tough as nails. Um, and UNC, who we're going to talk to Coleman Scott next, they just had a big win over Virginia Tech. Um, Pittsburgh's really good. Keith Gavin in his third year there. Um, and really, you know what you see there is a whole bunch of young coaches. You know, Keith and uh, Coleman and and Pat. They're all they're all pretty young, and they're bringing a lot of excitement to the ACC. Um, so, yeah, we're going to get Coleman Scott in here next. We'll talk about his big win 
over Virginia Tech. Uh, and then obviously I'll probably bring up the Coleman how uh, we're two weeks away from the NC State too. I'll ask his opinion on that one also. Um, and and uh, we'll see where else we go in the Coleman interview. So right now we got Coleman Scott coming in. All right, guys, we're here with Coleman Scott. Coleman, what's going on? What's going on, Ben? How you doing? Good. You know what I was thinking about earlier? I don't think you and I ever ever had an extended conversation. Um, other than about recruiting and yeah. some kids that you had a couple years ago, yeah. I, I would agree with that. I've right? yeah. seen each other, known each other for what fifteen years now. I think. Uh, I remember Back the first the twelve days. Well, the first time I remember you, I don't know what the first time you remember me. The first time I remember you, I thought it was highly confusing that there was a, a guy named Garrett Scott also, and you're mm-hmm. Coleman Scott, and I I just figured you guys are brothers. And yeah. I believe you guys took first and third in freestyle in Greco at Fargo, and but you guys swapped like you one of you guys beat one in the one style, and then right, yeah, remember that? I think I I won Greco, and he ended up winning freestyle that year. Yeah, my, but it been my junior year, maybe my sophomore year. Yeah, and then there's no relation though, correct? None at all, none. And he he was a beast in high school though. Really good, really good. Yeah, and then the other thing I remember you are you were from. I'm a big Drew Headley fan. So you're from the same high school as Drew, correct? Yeah, we grew up probably, oh, our houses were a mile, mile and a half apart. Our oh, whole yeah? Lives. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. And Waynesburg's had quite a few good, because you guys had Josh Koscheck and uh-huh. there's someone else. I know there's someone else I'm forgetting. Um, of course, Josh, Drew, and I were uh-huh. the big ones, were the yeah. All-Americans. And then there was a couple kids that went on to wrestle, uh, Division One as well. Uh, so we had a good little crew around the same time. Yeah. Nice. Okay, cool. Well, let's uh, now we go get that out of the way. Let's talk about UNC. You guys yeah. had a huge win on Friday night. I was uh, I was actually in North Carolina, but uh, at the other university, um, and I was following it with uh, Jordan Oliver was uh-huh. sitting with Daniel Cormier, and uh, you know he was kind of keeping us updated on all the results. So they had to feel good for you guys, right? Yeah, it was good. It was a good match. I I, I knew matchup wise, it, it would be pretty uh, pretty tight. Um, you know, we just needed to wrestle tough and, and we, we needed to win the hustle points. We needed to uh, make no matter what was happening, we needed to make mm-hmm. sure that, uh, you know, they were going to work for each and every point. And, and we were really concentrating just on winning the next position. Uh, yeah. And then, of course, the outcome would take care of itself in that sense. Um, you know, and, and our guys have really, you know, sort of stepped up since since Christmas break and they've really come together as a team and, and uh, they're putting the work in. And it's uh, what they're doing is just it's, it's a joy to be around them, really. Uh, they're listening and they're just wanting to get better each and every time they're on the mat. Yeah. I mean, your, your team is really young, right? If I, one I, senior, one, yeah, we yeah. Got one senior in the lineup, a couple juniors and the rest are freshmen, sophomores. So, uh, pretty young, you know, but y- you know how it is college. Students, Absolutely. It's, it's yeah. Freshman, senior don't really matter. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, you, you gotta be ready to see if, if we put you out there, we're, we're, we're dependent upon you, right? And, and mm-hmm. we're putting our faith in you, uh, you know, and you're, and you're ready to go. Yeah, yeah. Because so one guy who's I guess and, you know maybe you can fill us in, but he's kind of, kind of up and down here. But I followed this guy because you know we are up here in Wisconsin. We wrestle a lot of the Chicago teams. You mm-hmm. actually have three Chicago guys on your on your roster, but Joy yeah, 20, 25, 33, 49, all Chicago kids. Yeah, and so Joy Melendez, uh, you know, he's kind of had a really I don't know, up and down year. Been in the lineup. He's wrestled a few matches at thirty three. Uh, I'm guessing maybe it's a weight issue or. Um, um, really, it was, it, he came off surgery uh, oh, okay. in the summer. He came off surgery, and uh, I'd say it set him back a little bit. And, of course, you know, 25-pounders, I, I, there are not many of them that don't have a little bit of a weight you, issue. You made it uh, for a couple of years. <laughs> yeah, and it was <laughs> – I made it a couple of years ago, uh, you know. Uh, yeah. but, but, you know, he's really uh, come around, you know, uh-huh. and, and he hadn't lost faith in, in what he's doing, even though he does have – he has had some struggles. And, you know, I was there as a true freshman as well. He's a redshirt freshman, but my true freshman year, you know, started – my varsity John pulled me out and yeah, um, I remember that. let's see January and I went oh and three my first three matches you right? did I don't remember that yeah. who, who um I lost to Cornell okay um, well Nick Simmons was my first one. Oh really um, yeah I oh, lost man. I think it was six five close match but okay. it didn't really matter and then uh Cornell and then Iowa uh right in a row who was I would I would have been Charlie Falk at that point who would it have Charlie been? Falk okay that's right that's yeah. right so uh, you know, and, and it was really about, you know, when you're in those moments, I, I think you got to depend upon your work uh, and the team around you to bring you out of that, right? You yeah. can't lose faith in what mm-hmm. you're doing, and you, and you just got to keep working hard and, and keeping the right mindset, even though it is tough, right? We, yeah, we've, absolutely. we've all been there in those moments, um, you know, so so proud of him. You know, he stepped up against Princeton at 33, um, you know, because we, we, we were a little banged up. Yeah. Um, and, 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 you know, he made 128, stepped up, and, and, and you know, got the win. Yeah. And, and he's sort of progressing from there. Yeah. Yeah. Um- 
Hey, did, did side note, did uh, didn't John pull you and Nathan Nathan Morgan same time, say, same time right? Yeah, yeah, we were in red shirt that year, and we had a really good team. Yeah, um, you know, and I, and I think John, I I don't know really what the reasoning was, nor did I care. He just told me, hey, you're you're gonna go, um, and I trusted him. You know, <laughs> you mean I, you, you I mean you don't it. get to debate John Smith when he says something like that? Yeah, that don't, <laughs> that don't happen. There there wasn't much talking, and, and and he told me coming in, you know, hey, if you're the guy, you're the guy, you're gonna be ready to go. I want to, you uh-huh. know, uh, don't don't feel like you need a red shirt, maybe necessarily. Um, you know, and, and I have no regrets about that. Even yeah. though it was in the eighth place finish, you know, wasn't wasn't the greatest at the national tournament. Um, you know, but but it it sort of made me who I am. It made me realize what it takes to be a national champ. Because I don't know if you know, you know, when you're redshirting, it's hard to. Yeah. It'd have been really hard for me to to think I knew what it took uh, without being in that moment and wrestling at the national tournament and stuff. Yeah. Uh, hey, what is Nathan Morgan doing these days? He is running Wrestling Mart out in. He's oh. living in Orange County, California. Okay. I still keep up with him quite a bit. Nice. Uh, Mary got a kid. You know, awesome. uh, he's doing great. He's yeah. doing great. He's really killing it. You know, um, awesome, awesome guy. Yeah. Yeah. You guys probably <laughs> wrestled like every day for five years. Yeah, every day. Every, every day. day. We were roommates freshman year. And, uh, you know, he, he tell you the truth, I, I hated wrestling him. Uh, the dude was so freaking he's good. good. And, yeah. and, and uh, his skill level was so far above mine. Uh-huh. Um, and, and if I tried to tit for dad, it was, it was, I was getting smacked. I was getting beat. <laughs> uh, you know, it, it had to be sort of a brawl. If I was going to wrestle him uh, to, to give myself a chance. Yeah, for sure. Okay, let's let's keep going on this dual meet. So um, Jamie Hernandez drops a close one, uh, and then then you guys kind of hit your stride here, and you won you won five in a row. Zach Sherman got the big win. Um, obviously, it, uh, also Connor. And the, uh, then there's two big upsets: AC Headley and Kennedy Monday. Mm-hmm. Um, go ahead. Yeah. I, I mean, you know, Jamie. I thought that you know, in my mind, we could win that match, and and mm-hmm. uh, you know, we really just didn't have enough, enough offense. Uh, you know, and then, you know, Zach jumped out there. Zach's sort of been a, a leader for us this year. Not sort of, he has been, he's stepped up and he's coming yeah. off a red shirt year. Um, he, he's just wrestling well. He's just, he, he's wrestling free and he, and he believes that he's the best guy in the country and, and he's putting himself in, in good positions to win these matches. And a lot of it's coming from his top game. Uh, he's putting, he's, he's committing to a ride and it's making his life easier on his feet. And mm-hmm. Of course, O'Connor, you, you know, as, as a young kid, uh, he's man, he's so consistent, you, you yeah. know what you're going to get and he's going to be in your face and it's going to be a fight. Um, AC, you know, jumping up two weights this year, and and uh, really he had he had a good match. And I, I was pretty confident going into that, just because AC's skill level is is another one that's super high, um, and, and staying in that fight, and um, he did a good job, did a good job, and then of course Kennedy. Wait, 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 wait time up. What was good? When I said Waynesburg, you didn't bring up AC Headley. AC Headley, right there. Is that Drew's yeah. brother or cousin? I don't know why. I didn't uh, bring I, it up. They're distant cousins. They're distant, distant cousins. cousins. AC, okay. I, yeah, I've known AC for uh, gosh. I mean, I've, I've known his, his grandparents, his parents. I mean, they're, uh-huh. they're born and raised Waynesburg people. So, um, you know, it was it was big. He was number one in the country when we got him out of high school. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, you know, he, he's been in our lineup every year. And, uh, you know, he's been sort of a staple and he's been in the rankings. And, you know, now he's he's up at a, you know, again, that, that weight was a little bit of an issue mm-hmm. last year, I think. It got to him towards the end of the year and it made a jump. And, uh, you know, he's, he's wrestling well. And it, and it helps that we have uh, some guys that, you know, in, in the room that are pushing him each and every day, you know, because they're, they're right there with him. Yeah, okay. So let's go. Ken, Kennedy Monday, huge win over David McFadden. You know, I guess the question I have about him is, um, you know, like he had the huge win over Joey LaValle a couple years back, mm-hmm. first round in NCAAs when Joey was the two seed. Um, and he's had some really great results. But then he's also had, you know, a handful of losses, which – um, kind of leads you to believe, well, may- maybe he's not as good as he sometimes shows he is. I mean, um, you know, what are you expecting out of Kennedy every single time? Uh, I mean, Kennedy's, you know, again, we lost him last year. He was out uh, with injury from December on um, mm-hmm. and really just getting them back into it, you know, uh, late summer. Um, you know, so so the little beginning of the year, I, I, I knew going in, we, we might have some ups and downs. Yeah. Um, but this is, a, this is a guy, I mean, you saw it on Friday. That when he yeah. wrestles, man, he, he's, you know, those guys can't stop him, you know. Yeah. And, uh, and him, he stays focused for seven minutes. Gosh, he's going to be a bear, right? And, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, I'm glad the way that match played out the way it did. Uh, you know, you know how it is. I didn't want him to go out there and pin him and then be, oh, everybody he caught him. He caught him. No, that, Kennedy went out there and wrestled his match, man. He, yeah. he, you know, he was down 2-0, gave up close to a minute riding time right off the bat, you know, and, and really changed the match with with a reversal to his back. And then, and then kept pouring it on. You know, they get up to their feet, and he, he had a locked hands and a, an escape. It's 4-4, four, four and you're in a fight. Uh, and next thing you know, it's it's a takedown to his back to make it 10-4 at the end of the mm-hmm. first, right? But but And in, in some of those moments, you know, Kennedy in, in the past has had some lapses, uh, you know, but but 
second period, he just came out and did it again, you know, yeah. but, but he didn't yeah. catch him on his back. You know, he, he took him down with a leg in and turked him over and, yeah. um, you know, just kept building, you know, and I think the biggest, the, the best part of that match was he scored a takedown at the end of the third or end of the second yeah. uh, and, and then cut him in the third to go for the tech. Yeah. Uh, those are the mental focus pieces that, that sometimes he, he, he hadn't had and staying engaged in that match a little bit. Uh, and he just, you know, his mindset was there. His body was there. He's, he's been training well. And, and it was, it was awesome to see for him. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, okay. So you guys closed out the duel. Um, you know, the VT won a few of the last ones. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, anything else you want to do on the duel? Otherwise I got a few more questions for you. No, you're good. Whatever you got. Okay. Well, I, you know, I was actually just talking to Pat pop right before, I got you on here. He's yeah. a former Oklahoma State alum. And, you know, one yeah. of the things I brought to him was how good the ACC is getting. I mean, you guys just had the big win over Virginia Tech. Um, you got Pittsburgh coming up. They got Pittsburgh coming up. Obviously, you guys are going to wrestle each other in a couple weeks. I mean, it, that's something that he, you know, he's pumped about is how good you guys as a conference are getting because it's week in and week out good competition. Yeah. I mean, I mean, you know, we, we save the ACC does all our scheduling. So we, we do each other the last five weeks of yeah. the season. Um, and, and like I say, that's a built in tough five weeks right there you know with yep. 14 in the top 10 right now are probably going to be i would say tomorrow with us yep. maybe Likely. jumping in there yeah you know so uh us nc state tech and, and Pitt, and then virginia not far behind mm -hmm. um you know you're you better be ready to battle each and every week which as you know you know when you have those built in it, it's going to be a good schedule right and it, it, it helps on all senses it helps on of course preparing us for the end of the year but it also helps when you're sitting down in a recruit's house and going like hey you guys are in the acc i know and we're going to have a <laughs> we're going to have tough matches each and every yeah week, yeah you know um you don't have the big 10 because we don't have as many schools right but, but uh -huh. it sort of shrinks it down but you know that they, they i mean five t six teams and it is it's a dog fight um, yeah you know so uh, I, I, it's just making, again, making our lives a little easier, you know, and I always say, you know, kudos, of course, to the, to the coaches, but also the admin of these programs and these schools that have invested in us and believe in us and, and, and sort of gone against the grain a little bit, you know, with hiring a young guy like me or, well, I mean, um, you know, Keith and Pat. And, yeah. Uh, I know you're not saying Pat's old, but all, all you guys are relative between you, Keith and Pat, everyone's relatively young. I mean, they went out and found yeah. some really good coaches. Yeah, and, 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 you know, I think they took chances. And, and, and when you take a chance, but you, you sort of, you know, you know what you're going to get with us. You know, I think that all of us are going to work hard. We're, we're yeah. you know, we want to win. We, we've been at the highest level, whether it's been uh, in, in college or in the international scene and, and understand what it takes. And, uh, you know, and also I look at it as, as we're good people, right? And, yeah. and, and that attracts a lot of good kids to, to, to come to these programs. And, uh, you know, we're not settling for just having – four teams in the top 10 i think each and every one of us believe that we we, we can position ourselves in the next couple of years to, to to chase a team trophy yeah nice yeah i mean it, it's when you look at your schedule it's wow the acc is getting really good it's really yeah. impressive to, to look at um okay well that was fun you got any last words for us no man i appreciate the time i appreciate the time and, and being on and uh you yeah. know it's like i said i, I love that that we're getting some attention down here in the south you yeah. know a, as a whole and you know we're, we're just going to keep building Absolutely. Cool. That's going to be I know we'll follow the duel in a couple weeks. NC, NC State, that's a big in-state rivalry. Yeah, two weeks. Uh, two weeks. You got any last words for Pat? <laughs> hey, no. We're, 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 I mean, we're, we've known each other a long yeah, time. Of course, so, of course. Uh, you, you know, of course, but you always want to beat those guys closer to you, or maybe worse than you than, than uh -huh. the other ones, you know, uh, to have a little bragging rights. And, and he's he's beaten us every year I've been here. Uh, you know, and they've been some tight duels, but, you know, yeah. we've we, we got to go out and, and compete and step up and, and, and go win one. Yeah, absolutely. That'll be that'll be a really fun duel, mate. Okay, thank you, Coleman, for your time. We thank appreciate you. it. Uh, have a great day. Congrats on your win over Virginia Tech. Thanks, Ben. Have a good one. Peace. All right, guys. You heard from Coleman Scott. Um, we are going to uh, we're going to talk to the Heat next, but man, the ACC is getting so tough. They are uh, man. Five, four really good teams, like you said, potentially four in the top ten next week. And that's something, I mean, you young kids, you probably don't remember what it was, but ACC used to stink. They used to not have any good teams. And now they got four of them. And, um, you know, NC State, UNC, those are right next to each other. I'm sure it's going to be an awesome match day. The Reynolds Coliseum was packed for Virginia, so I can only imagine it's going to be um, very, very packed for Virginia Tech. I'm sorry, for Virginia Tech. Wow. Uh, for UNC, NC State here in two weeks. 
Um, okay, let, let me try to connect with Zahid right here. He'll be our final guest on the show today. Um, he's coming off the win of Mateo, Mateo Pelicone. He's the hot front runner. I don't know. We got a lot of things to ask Zahid. We'll, uh, we'll see what he's got to tell us. What's up, guys? We are here with Mr. Zahid Valencia. Zahid, I was just before I brought you, I was talking about how much fire you're on. You are a Mateo Pelicone champ, U.S. Open champ, um, front runner for the Hodge Trophy. You're having a good year, huh? Yeah, yeah, it's been an awesome year, you know, especially it being my last college college season, doing the whole freestyle folks out together. I mean, it's just been a fun journey so far. Absolutely. Okay, so let's let's talk about the most recent stuff first. Uh, Mateo Pelicone. I th- I think the takeaway there for me is, um, you know, Alex beat you I don't know, fairly convincingly last summer, and then when I when I watched the match two weeks ago, I, I feel like that's an uh, entirely different match than what I watched. Uh, yeah, last summer. So, you know, what's been the difference there? Is it, have you gotten bigger and stronger? Obviously, you went to 184, um, so you're kind of filling into that weight class. Is that what the difference has been? Um, I haven't really gotten too much bigger. Okay. Um, I've been working out, you know, trying to keep my strength up. And I think just wrestling smarter um, against a guy like that, who, you know, he tried, he tried to overpower me last time yeah. and got some quick, quick points by exposure. So this time, just staying. You know, in solid defense with my with my offense, making sure that he doesn't get to his underhook, and just knowing every, every, everything, every part of the mat, and during that match, just knowing what he's gonna do, and then get to my offense. Okay, yeah, because because that match, I mean, obviously that match went really well for you. Um, the guy you wrestled uh, was it the semis or the quarters that you wrestled Erdin? Uh semis. Semis. Okay, another guy who's he's been a world number one. Um, when I watched that match too. I mean, wow, wow, just uh, the way you're getting to all the different offensive attacks you're doing. Is, is that another thing where, um, I mean, maybe it's my imagination, but I feel like you have even more options this year than you've ever had offensively. And you don't have to give away your secrets if you don't want to. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think it's just the high rate at which I shoot, you know. Um, if I do single legs for a whole minute, two minutes, then – you know, they think that's coming, and then it just opens up, you know, a high C to mm-hmm. a snap to a low single, I think. Just having that variation and then having them focus on one thing opens up a, a, um, a bunch of other moves. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's one where you hit a step one way, uh, duck under the other way on, on Alex Deringer. That was just uh, – it was masterful. That was what I, that, I'm trying. But we're gonna duck hunters with the kids that coach. That, that's if I could like pick. I actually, I think I actually screen recorded it and I showed them when I was working with them the next day on how smooth you hit it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I was I was watching that. I saw it on Instagram. On the, <laughs> and I mean, I I didn't know what I did because I and you I thought, damn, I look good. I don't, I don't <laughs> drill that or anything. It's just something I feel. I guess you don't drill it. No, no, I mean, I'll drill, like, the single leg, and I'll drill, like, a misdirection, like, single leg to a knee pull. Okay. But not necessarily, like, a duck like that. Oh, well, uh, you would have fooled me. I, th- I thought you drilled that quite a few times. Um, okay, so let's talk about your senior year. Um, you know, I, I guess the first thing that I think of is you, you guys, Arizona State, had the number one recruiting class this five years ago when you were a senior in high school. Um, and now, you know, you guys are fi- finally starting to put it together. You're ranked really highly. You guys had the win over Penn State. Uh, I saw that. I thought it was awesome that the crowd, you know, it looked like you had like 10,000 people. The crowd swarmed the floor. Um, what, what did that feel like? I mean, it, obviously, you got to think a little bit about the team success and the, and the part you have yeah. to play in that, right? Yeah, I mean, it was awesome, especially that Penn State one. You know, for me, it sucked that I had a buy or a forfeit, so I didn't yeah, get to wrestle. Unfortunately. But, I mean, it was it was cool seeing all those fans there, you know. Um, our I mean, our arena is usually not that packed and stuff, so mm-hmm. being able to promote it and get a bunch of these fans out there, even people that just watched for the first time and having that kind of atmosphere, it was cool to see. And then everyone rushing uh, rush, rushing down on the court after. So, I mean, it's been a good year. Our team's looking good. Um, uh, we took one loss to Ohio yeah. State, but that was, you know, controversial, you know. Wait, what was uh, controversial about it? I'm for, I mean, I remember it was really close. It was like a one point dual meet, right? One point dual meet. Which one I, was uh, controversial? My my match. I had a pin. If you watched the oh, video, oh yeah, <laughs> I had about three pins. You know, I didn't get it. I get, <laughs> I get that pin, and uh, we win the duel. We're undefeated, but I think it's a good thing. You know yeah. that we lost. This isn't. We didn't strive to be Ohio State and duel. You know, so uh-huh. it keeps you know our whole team hungry. 
um, more prepared, you know, willing to work harder for for that national title in uh, in March. Okay, cool. Um, so, uh, is the Hodge? Uh, so I don't know if you saw, but well, we did a, we did a mid season awards the other day. Um, you know, is the Hodge something that you're thinking about? Is it something you're actively pursuing, uh, or is it kind of like, hey, if it happens, it happens? Yeah, I mean, I've been thinking about the Hodge even in previous years. You know, I made in the finals. It was against me, Bo, Seth, yeah. mm-hmm. and me. So, you know, this year I just wanted to put it on guys, get a bunch of bonus points, um, and I'm on I'm on track to. I'll pretty much get all bonus points except for that one match that's going to suck against Taylor Vance. Yeah, what happened there? I don't know. I think I came out to lax days ago thinking, you know, it's just yeah. in my back pocket. I don't have to do much. And he came out, you know, ready to go, swinging hard. Well, of course uh, you're the national champ. Everyone's going to swing hard on you. Yeah. I <laughs> mean, it's just it's different wrestling people in a duel compared to a tournament. You know, it's, it's a, it gets a little frustrating for me wrestling people in a duel me. Absolutely. Out, they're out there just to not give up the pin or the tag. Mm-hmm. So. In a tournament, they're actually trying to win, which yeah. – which for me it opens up a lot more for my out- offense when they're attacking. So, but I mean that match, that match. I mean, luckily I was able to get the win at the end. Um, yeah. And ever since then, you know, I just made it a point to try to get bonus points throughout the rest of the year. Yeah, I mean Ve- Vegas was obviously in your weight class. I think it was eight of the top ten guys or something, and that was you yeah. know what from an outsider's perspective. I said I don't coach you at all. But, you know, when you have the close match versus Taylor Venz, it's like, oh, well, we saw, you know, he get tested once. Is he going to get tested again here at Vegas? And then you kind of steamrolled everybody. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't think any of these kids could, you know, could keep up with my pace, my high offensive attack. So, you know, I think one of the matches, I think it was the lead Dupree, it was 2-0 mm-hmm. going to the second. And then I ended up scoring another, like, 16 points or something. Yep. Yeah, I well, I will tell you. I don't know that you need to comment on this. I will tell you. I, you know, I am a fan of trash talk. You probably know that if you follow me at all. And yeah, I, I thoroughly enjoyed um, uh, what you did to Aaron Brooks when you were saying six to zero at yeah. uh, at the U.S. Open. <laughs> and yeah, I, I mean, it's just it's kind of. I just think it's for him. It's. I mean, it's kind of disrespectful to be down six zero, ten seconds left, and now you want to say something and. You know, once the ref uh, blew the whistle, he looks at me. He's like, "Come on, bring it." I said, "What? Like, what do you mean? Like, I'm, <laughs> I'm just bringing it. Like, where have you been? You scored zero points." He's like, "I'm a pin you." Uh, Ten seconds left. I'll pin you in March. I said, oh, "Okay." Uh, uh, well, then I, and then I love it. I don't know if you cut. I don't even know if you know what your trader, but you, then now you're calling these guys kids. That's kind of that's yeah. kind of fantastic. Yeah, <laughs> it's a good, good mean, way to good way to talk down to them. <laughs> Different in the international level compared to college, the college kids, that's for sure. Yeah. All right. I, I, I love some trash talk. Um, okay, so w- when I look at the rest of your schedule, um, you don't have anyone too highly ranked coming up. So uh, is your freestyle competition done now till the trials in April? Or, uh, you know, you're going to try to get a few more matches in. I know Cuba's coming up potentially. Uh, yeah. What are you thinking about that? Um. I mean, for me, honestly, whatever Zeke tells me, um, right now I think it, it won't be until the trials. Okay. Um, but if something pops up, if Zeke wants me to do something, then he'll talk to me about that and we'll discuss to see if that's a good plan. But right now it's just finishing the college season. You know, I got a senior night this week in Stanford right. at home, my last, my last home meet. So Is your dad coming out for that? Uh, he's gonna try to. He has my little brother CIF tournament. Oh, good. He, come on, just tell him. He, he, Kale, he, Kale can handle himself, Dad. Come he's on. The coach there too, so he's coaching <laughs> everyone. So, but my mom's coming out. Okay, so that's be fun. Um, whatever the Pac-12 schools that we had to do and stuff. Yeah. So excited, excited, excited to finish my college career. Has to yeah. start all freestyle. Yeah, K- Kale's been coming on this year. So uh, your dad tells me. Did, did your dad ever tell you he sat down and argued with me for an hour one night? Uh, probably. He, he argued He argued with everyone. He was, he was upset because I said, you don't have to be good when you're younger to be good when you're older. And he said, I, he said, I disagree and I want to sit down and talk to you about it. And so he sat down and talked for an hour. And then yeah. like a year later, he said, you know what, Ben? I was wrong because Kale didn't even wrestle. And, then, <laughs> and now he's only yeah. wrestling for like two years and he's like really good. 
Yeah, yeah, uh, no, he he's really put it together. You know, he's getting stronger and learning how to wrestle pretty good. Uh, so, how did he get away with not wrestling if you and Anthony are his older brothers? That that's the thing. He just my dad put so much focus on me and Anthony. Um, you know, making sure we get into a good college, uh, mm-hmm. his college scouting, making sure that we do everything right, and it kind of just turned an eye to my little brother. But ever since. Um, we went to college, you know. I think yeah. my little brother had it even worse than us. <laughs> and, you know, waking up early in the mornings, late nights, uh-huh. you know, whatever the, the, he does with the team. But yeah, but my brother's happy. He's he's happy that he's getting to that level. Yeah, and he's in all these colleges looking at him and stuff. So it's awesome to see. Is he gonna come to Arizona State? Well, I, we who knows? I mean, that's that's my plan. But yeah. My, no, that's not. I'm not gonna make the choice for him. It's up, it's up for him wherever, wherever he likes the best. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, Arizona State seemed to work out pretty well for you. Obviously, yeah. it's a nice place to live. Uh, yeah. So, right. It's fair. Yeah. Yeah. It's great. Great place. Okay. And I'm so I'm, so I'm assuming you're gonna stick around for a few years, right? Yeah. It's freestyle. That's, yeah. That's the plan. Stick around. Um, stay with stay with the team. Uh, stay with Sunkiss and stuff. So. Nice. Excited for that too. Yeah. Nice. So no fighting in your future? Um, I mean, it could go. I fought before. It could you go. have? What do you mean? Like like underground fights with like my dad. We Stop. Do Come on. I swear, a bunch of MMA fights with uh, <laughs> What? With me and my brother, Pico. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. We were, we were like. Can uh, I find these on YouTube or something? Um, I don't know. I don't know. You'd have to ask my dad on that one to see where. Where you can find them, but oh man, you know that that tape is probably worth something. If it if it exists, it's probably worth something. Yeah, I, I should I should go and try to find it or something. But okay, so we we used to do a bunch of jujitsu and stuff growing up. So were you pumped when Aaron got a knockout last weekend? Oh yeah, that was awesome. Aaron and uh, one of my old coaches, Juan Archuleta. Oh, he coached you? Yeah, he used to coach a little bit at Bosco and me and Anthony mostly. Oh okay, cool. I didn't know that. Nice. Yeah, so that's nice, cool. nice. Okay, wow, we got breaking news. Zahid is already an MMA fighter. We did not know <laughs> that. Maybe, maybe at some point, people people be mad. You know, when I start talking to people about fighting, and I'm not a huge advocate of fighting. I think I love wrestling more than fighting. But uh, I think wrestling people get get mad at me because you know they don't even want any slight doubt that you, they want you in like the next three Olympic cycles. Not even thinking about yeah. fighting whatsoever. Yeah, yeah. I mean. For right now, probably not. I'm probably just yeah. gonna stick to wrestling. Mm-hmm. Um, but anything can happen. But I'm fine with just wrestling and then getting a career and whatever. You know, my major is business real estate. So if I go into that or coaching or yeah. whatever yeah. my life takes me. Cool. All right, Zahid. Appreciate the time. That was fun. Good luck uh, chasing the Hodge. Good luck at yeah. STAs. Good luck at the trials. And maybe we'll catch up to you in the future. Yeah, for sure. Thank you. All right. Peace. Yeah, bye. All right, we had a fun day. We got to talk to Pat Papalizio. We got to talk to Coleman Scott. And we got to talk to Zahid Valencia. We got some news. Zahid Valencia has already had some underground MMA fights. Who would have guessed that? I didn't know. You didn't know. Wow. Bre- breaking news on, on Deck Podcast. So that's it for this Monday. Hope you guys appreciate those guys uh, giving us their time. And we will talk to you guys next week.